Hey, look what we have found A big sound in a small town Far away from the bright lights They're making music every night Discover what is all around A big sound, a big sound. A big sound. Listening to Big Sound Small Town with Sandy Carlton. Hey y'all, come out to the Earl Scruggs Music Festival September 1st through 3rd, 2023. That's Labor Day weekend at the Tron International Equestrian Center in Mill Spring, North Carolina. Enjoy music on two stages, workshops, craft vendors, food, drinks, everything you might want in a festival experience. We have lodging on site, and for three days, we have three major headliners. We have Emmy Lou Harris, the infamous String Dusters, Green Sky Bluegrass, and a whole host of other really incredible artists celebrating the legacy of Earl Scruggs for a full weekend. So don't miss it, September 1st through 3rd, 2023. Today on Big Sound Small Town, my guest is Aaron Goss. And if you'll check back uh, through my podcast or if you're a regular follow follower, you will know that in February of this year, 2023, right before he left for a through hike of the Appalachian Trail, we sat down and, and talked about his upcoming adventure. Now, today we're going to recap this whole adventure. Um, and I urge you to go back and listen to that one to get a um, feeling of how he felt, you know, how how it was before he left. And we'll compare and contrast how that ended up being, you know. But um, uh, I think it'll give you a good framework to where we're going. So welcome back, Aaron. Well, thank you. It's good to be back. Thanks for having me. I guess I should go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> kind of became my little tagline. Yeah. I mean, um, this sort of happened by, I don't know, just by, by repetitive. Uh, it just sort of happened. I just started saying it, and then it just kind of became a thing. Okay, well, let's set this up, too. Now, you uh, vlogged pretty much your whole adventure. I, I did, so... Um, yeah, I did. A, I, I put out a daily vlog. Uh, so when I first started, I was I was really dumb and thought that I could do it basically every day. Right. Um, and there's just not enough service, and it takes too much time, and it's really a hassle. So um, after about a week, I realized I needed to kind of backlog them and sort of schedule them out. Right. Like about a week at a time. Sure. I mean, basically you were. By by mid journey, you were a week behind, basically with your videos. Is that close to right? Uh, or, or earlier than that, even okay. really. Um, I, well, I guess at the beginning, I was probably two or three days um, out, and then as I went, it kind of got further and further. Um, right, a little, but it was never more than than a week or so. All right, let's tell let's tell listeners um, where they can see this. You know, yeah. So on YouTube, um, you can search at og hikes um and that's all one word at og hikes um, or you could also search for my name which is aaron Gross. right and there's uh basically 150 of these 150 videos yes oh um yes so my summit day was day 151 um there's a couple bonus videos kind of thrown in when i sort of needed um, right some filler to buy myself some time Basically, I would uh, I would put the videos together when I was off trail at hostels or in, in hotels when I had uh, service and whatnot. So sometimes I would need to buy myself a little extra time, and I'd do like a little bonus sure. thrown in there. Was that pretty time consuming when you were when you were in a place that you could do that? I mean, was that a large portion of what you did when you were in like a hostel or a, or a, you know where you had sales service? It, it really was. Um, I mean, it, I got pretty quick at it. I was pretty efficient at it. Um, I could put, I could edit the videos and put them together pretty quickly, but it still took a while 
for them to download and then upload. Yeah. So I had to download them to my phone, then I had to upload them to YouTube. And, and right. those two processes, uh, it took a while. So it was kind of frustrating because sometimes all of my friends would be kind of, you know, just relaxing or going out or eating or doing whatnot, and I'd be kind of holed up in my bunk or sure. room or wherever I was putting together videos. You were pretty dedicated to that, though. I mean, it's a pretty well-documented um story of your of your trek it, it it is and it got to be sort of a hassle um for a for a little bit of it um but i'm gl- really glad that i did it and i'm really glad that i have kind of that visual record of the hike uh and i actually went back and watched a few of the first ones the other day just just to kind of recapture and i'm just really glad that i have them yeah yeah well uh, of, of course with everything uh, you had it down to a pretty good art of, of the right length. It, it kind of like with podcasting. Sometimes you just don't know about lengths, you know, lengths of time. But you you look like you had it down. Uh, you got it down to what was pretty enjoyable. I mean, obviously you have a ton of subscribers, a ton of of, of people who watch. You know, the comments are huge. I mean, you've uh, become basically trail famous. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so in terms of the links, um, I definitely got some feedback from um, from my older son, Caleb, um, and my younger son, Silas. They both kind of gave some feedback on that, um, and some of their friends were, were watching and tuning in. So I got some feedback from some younger folks, um, and then I just kind of knew from watching other hikers sort of what I – the length that I kind of enjoyed as well. Um, so I just kind of tried to keep it in that sort of 8 to, to 15-minute sure. range. No one really wants to – go past that true i mean I, yeah that's i mean <laughs> some yeah. of them some of them are longer but but those typically are days that were pretty magical or there was something um pretty major going on right right all right let's go back let's take it all the way back to uh 23rd of february and so on that day what were you feeling that day kind of with with the start of this um, so that very first day, uh, I was nervous. <laughs> I was scared. I was I was scared about a lot of things. Just kind of anxious, unsure, excited, all of that, all mixed in together. Um, so, so Jenny, uh, uh, my wife, who's who's yeah, you probably know a little bit, but um, whose trail name is Honey Stinger, um, and our friend um, uh, hiked with or Rebecca um, hiked with us on the approach trail and then a couple miles in the first day and so then that first day out when I and they camped with me that night so then that first day when I kind of left by myself I started out and I was leaving the campsite and I got a little turned around and I wasn't exactly sure which way to go. <laughs> that's funny but Jenny was filming me walk away and then I just kind of stopped because I wasn't exactly sure which way to travel <laughs> that's funny and I walked back to her and I just kind of whispered in her ear and I was like I'm not exactly sure which way I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So I kind of got my head together, sort of took a deep breath and uh, and got on the trail and hiked out. But, um, yeah, just kind of walking away. Um, I mean, I, I, anxious, excited, nervous, all those things. Did you um, – was your mind already set that it, this was something that you could do? I, I still wasn't sure if I, if I could or if I would be able to at that point. Um, I mean, the longest backpacking trip I'd done before was like you know, three days. So um, to try and take on something like this, I, I just wasn't sure. And that was part of the the anxious and the nervous was that sure. I didn't want to, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to let people down. I didn't want to let myself down. Right. So. Well, I've been around you um, a long time now and uh I really never had a doubt because uh, you're not too much of a quitter at anything, you know. Yeah, and a pretty determined guy. Yeah, I mean, I knew it was going to be something pretty bad to have to take me off trail. Yeah, so. and that almost happened. <laughs> I, I had I had some I had some things to do. <laughs> uh, let's talk. Let's talk about the first thing that that happened that was um a bit freaky even for the Appalachian Trail um 
So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to the, the dog. Incident. Yes. Yeah. The infamous dog incident. So, um, so it started out a great day. My, my sister had come to visit me. Um, I was in Waynesboro, um, coming out of a hostel and, and, uh, my sister, whose trail name is One Mile, <laughs> came out. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> she picked me up. Um, we hung out, and then she took me um, and a friend of mine, um, uh, Pigpen, and she. Uh, so my sister dropped us off at, at, at the trailhead. She actually hiked um, a mile with us, hence her trail name. She always hikes <laughs> a mile. And then, um, so Pigpen and I hiked out, and we got up on this on this mountaintop, and there was this young couple up there, and they had two dogs with them. Um, Real, real nice young couple. Dogs were, were super cute, you know, uh, black lab with a bandana around its neck. And I love dogs, so I asked the, asked the owner if I could pet his dog. He said, yeah, sure, no problem. Sometimes he jumps. I was like, well, I don't care if he jumps on me. I'm filthy. Yeah. And uh, so I bent down to pet the dog, and he jumped up. And I didn't think anything of it because he, he told me he jumps. But when he jumped up, he kind of latched onto my arm and just bit down. Uh, pain shot through my arm I pulled away the owner pulled him back and uh I kind of just sort of ran away (laughs) um dropped all my stuff and took a look at my arm and it was it was pretty gnarly it was uh it was pretty bad um so pig pen came over she had some uh neosporin and she put that on I put a band-aid on it and uh I wrapped it up with an ace bandage and the people felt really bad. They wanted to know if they could do anything, but I mean, I, there wasn't really anything they could do. And the only thing I wanted to do was just keep hiking. So that's what I did. I just kept hiking. <laughs> but now you did have to go get some treatment, did, did you not? I did. So I hiked out that night, and um, we got to a, a camp spot, and I set up and, and kind of got into my, into my tent. And I looked at the wound that night, and it was it was pretty deep and it was pretty big <laughs> and uh, I realized you know I'm out here on this trail I, I probably need to get this looked at and um, so I actually texted a trail angel um, and he came he texted me right back and said he'd come pick me up in the morning he met me at a trailhead about 8 15 took me into town in, in there in Waynesboro uh, took me to the urgent care and he stuck with me the whole time um, at the urgent care, they couldn't they couldn't stitch it because they said it would it would hold in any infection that was there. Um, but they gave me a prescription, uh, some strong antibiotics. So I went went to CVS, picked up the prescription, and the trail angel took me back to the trail, and then I hiked on from there. Wow, I guess you had to change the, that out a lot for the next little while. I did. So that was the main thing was just trying to keep it clean, and that was really a hassle on trail. Mm-hmm. I'm sure um, it was. Yeah, I would have to. I would have to keep bottled water with me that I didn't use for drinking, but right. I only used for cleaning the wound. Right. And I would change the dressing two times a day, yeah. um, which was definitely a hassle. But uh, so I had to keep, um, you know, the bandages, uh, bacitracin, clean water, uh, an ace bandage that I tried to keep clean. Which which would have also been extra weight in your pack. It, it was, and so that water that that I was carrying, you know. It would just be for cleaning the wound. Right. So, yeah. Um, uh, so when did you realize that it was going to be okay and that you could probably so, continue on? Um, so it never it never looked bad. Like it never. Well, <laughs> it looked really. Yeah. Bad. It always still, it still bad. looks bad. <laughs> but in terms of like from an infection standpoint, it never. Um, you know, got like sort of reddish or, or scary looking. Um, and I was actually hiking with uh, with a guy named Gummy Bear who is a nurse. He's a traveling nurse, um, works in the ER. And um, I caught up with him probably a, uh, probably a week or so after the bite incident. And uh, he would keep an eye on it for me as well. And so oh, that, was a, that always kind of gave me um, uh, reassurance. Sure, yeah. That he was kind of checking it out as well. Now... Okay, we'll we'll back up. So we're going to step back again here a little bit. Uh, you kind of inched your days or your miles up as you went along. I mean, I, I, basically, did you hike yourself into hiker legs or hiker shape? Because yep. I know you were in good shape before you left. I mean, you've been working on getting yourself in shape, but that's kind of like what they always say. He's in good shape, but he's not in football shape or he's not in basketball shape. And I guess it's the same about the trail too, right? 
Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I worked out as much as I could, but nothing really replicates, you know, hiking every day as hiking every day. And so, when, you know, I, I worked right up until I left, so you just can't replicate hiking, right. you know, 8 to 12 hours. Sure, yeah. Um, so, the, so the biggest thing was getting – getting my feet strong and calloused to where they didn't hurt i mean your your feet just at the beginning of the hike they hurt all the time and i can't really remember when it was that they didn't hurt anymore but but at, at some point my feet just didn't hurt adapted i guess they adapted yeah, yeah. um and i actually can't even really uh, feel them <laughs> right now <laughs> um which I've, I've read is is common um but it's sort of like they're uh it's like they're that feeling like when your feet are asleep sort of that kind of but like i just can't really feel them right now but i, I think they'll come back around <laughs> yeah. um but yeah uh, so like so like day two i did i think i did 16 miles that day which was kind of a uh, definitely a push and kind of more miles than a lot of folks kind of do on their second day um but it took me all day and i was dead tired um and then towards the end of the hike i mean 20 mile days were were no problem and and i was still I wouldn't say fresh, but um, uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely hiked myself into into shape. I th- I'd say it probably took about six hundred miles or so before I really had really? legs. Well, that's a pretty long way, really. It, you would you would think it would be sooner than that. Yeah, you would think. But I think just from I don't know to really have trail legs where I could just hike all day and it didn't bother me. I'd say it took probably six hundred miles. Well, now another thing that I'm going to ask you because a lot of people. Have encounter this with uh within several miles is uh you had no real blister problems the only real um blisters i got were one so one day it's probably a i don't know a couple weeks into the hike so i always wore in gingy toe sock liners underneath my darn tough socks and they really helped to prevent blisters um and so i hadn't been getting any blisters at all and one day my my socks were they were just filthy and i think they were probably wet and i was just i'm just not going to put these on today and that day i got loaded up with blisters <laughs> and so i wore them every other day after that and never had them again no, yeah never, never and, and and at the end i know your feet had to be wrinkled and all i'm surprised you didn't have them because you spent a large portion at the end of your journey in water there was about probably two weeks or so where my feet were wet every single day yeah. um, it was just so much rain and so much water uh, on the trail there were days multiple days in a row where I was literally hiking through a, through a creek I mean the trail was a creek and I would my feet were underwater all day long but, st- but still you did not get blisters I, I, I got hot spots Yeah. Um, and about midday I would always stop take off my shoes take off my socks and try and air out my feet as best i could they would they'd be just pruny you know yeah. completely pruny um but i had enough um callus material on my feet that, that they held up i never got trench foot yeah that's good um, but yeah they were they were definitely my feet got tough <laughs> yeah I, I would say they they did and obviously it's um a fine endorsement of your of your sock socks that you wore uh obviously you took one of them out and it changed the whole thing so obviously you had the right combination of sock and shoe yeah it's a it's a pretty common setup um a lot of folks use the ngng um toe liners um and the darn tough socks over top that's that's the most common sock on trail um they really are they are, they really are great. Um, darn turf, not darn, darn tough, right? Darn tough. And if, <laughs> and if they get a, a hole at any point, you can exchange them for a new pair. Wow, so, lifetime guarantee. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's, do you have to exchange one? I've got one pair that's got a hole, um, so I'll be I'll be exchanging them. So that's cool. I carried I carried three pair of those, um, two to hike in and then one to sleep in, um, and uh, I would just rotate them, um, but. When one pair got wet, I you know I I could switch out to another pair, but then you just have two pairs that are right wet. that are wet. So I mean yeah. they just never dry out on trail. All right. Well, um, how did you sleep? I mean, I mean, that's a lot of miles. Did you sleep good at night because of the miles, or were there some 
you know. Yeah, I'd say I'd say there was a combination. Um, I mean, there were some nights when I would get to camp and I would just be absolutely exhausted, and I could just sleep through the night no matter what. Um, but then there were also some instances where the shelter, like where, so if it was raining, I would try and stay in the shelter. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, if it's raining, a lot of other people were trying to stay in the shelter. Sure. And so we would be just sleeping pad to sleeping pad right um and if i knew the folks it, it was no big deal right but if it was somebody new or somebody i hadn't met before it's just awkward it's yeah that close yeah to somebody. i'm sure i'm sure it is yeah <laughs> I, i'm sure it is um uh, let's uh okay this will be an interest of listeners of course uh let's talk about wildlife that you saw along the way so uh yeah there was there was a there was it took a while kind of um to to start to see some so when i started it was still you know pretty cold yeah yeah um so i didn't really see that much at the beginning um but um i saw i saw an owl in southwest virginia that was absolutely magnificent it was huge i I was i was hiking along it was um near the priest mountain and which is kind of an iconic spot. And I heard this sound. It sounded like a bass drum thumping. I was like, what is that? And I kept hiking. And then finally I heard it again. I looked to my right, and there was a, the most giant owl you've ever seen beating its wings. And it sounded like a bass drum. Wow, that's pretty powerful. It was amazing. Yeah, that's, that sounds amazing. Um, and so um, in Pennsylvania, I came across three rattlesnakes. Uh, one on the trail that was as close to as me and you, and uh, I was a I was about to step and I and I heard it. It, it warned me, and so I, I gave it a wide berth, and went way around it. Sure. Uh, I saw three bear, uh, which was really cool. I'd wanted to see a bear, but I wanted to see it in the right right situation. My right situation was to be able to see the bear. Get a photo and have it run away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was like the I mean, that's, that's, that's of a, a bear yeah, sign. yeah, yeah. That's that's. I mean, <laughs> sure. That's, so um, I only got so out of the three, I only got one picture out out of it. Um, but but that was cool uh, to see three bear. Um, and then around Vermont, we started to see piles and piles of moose poop, um, piles of it. <laughs> and so I really wanted to see the actual moose and. Um, the uh, the last day of actual hiking, not my summit day, but the last day of hiking, I heard a big splash in the water, and I looked up, and there was a moose. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it, was, it was so awesome to, to get to see. Now, you saw, I guess you saw the ponies when you went through uh, Grayson Highlands? I did. So I had really bad weather going through Grayson Highlands. So I'm going to go back and, and rehike that section um, because I had terrible wind and rain, 40-mile-per-hour wind. And so walking through there, you're exposed. It's, it's above tree line. And so it was really, really rough. And I was just keeping my eyes peeled, just trying to find a pony, because I was like, I've got to see these ponies. Right. And so way off in the distance, it was probably at least half a mile off trail, I saw these two ponies, and I was like, well, i got to go see them. So I hiked over to them. And like, like I said, it was at least 40-mile-per-hour wind gusts, and those ponies could care less about me (laughs) and I'd heard all these stories about how friendly they were and how they would lick you and all this kind of stuff but I think those ponies were just they were just trying to survive out there (laughs) so but I did see them and then uh, tell me about the wild goats yeah so uh, in (laughs) Harrisburg there's this uh, group of six wild goats that kind of roam the AT through that section and I'd heard about them and uh so I, I I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I hope I get to see these goats. And so I was, I was hiking along. I just left the rice field shelter, which is a gorgeous shelter. And um, I was hiking along, and all of a sudden I see these goats come come running up. And I was like, oh, there's the goats. So I'm, I'm fishing out my phone out of my pocket, and I start filming them. And these goats come up, and they just basically, like, attack me. <laughs> <laughs> and they all have horns, and they're kind of scary, and there's six of them, and they're just licking the salt off my legs and off my arms and they're just pushing each other to get to me and they're all kind of knocking into me and so I was trying to fend them off with my hiking poles and then they start licking my hiking poles <laughs> and the guy I was hiking with he just sort of he walked around it and then he starts filming me <laughs> not helping at all 
And then finally they all just ran off. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. Um, did you stay in any places that you thought were kind of scary, creepy? Um, I, for the most part, I was never really sketched out about right. where I was staying. It was, it's funny, like the progression, like, like the second night I camped alone, um, they call it stealth camping, but you're not really stealth because, I mean, people can find you. see you. Yeah, but yeah. it's just like a common term people call it right. stealth camping. It's actually dispersed camping. Right. Uh, it's not It's not like an assigned campsite. Right. Um, so that second night I, I had a stealth spot, dispersed camping, and, and every crack, every noise, every <laughs> leaf rustle, I was sure. on edge. And then towards the end, I mean, I would just throw my tent up and, get in there and just sleep through the night um and and nothing would really phase me one night i was in a i was in a shelter in uh in virginia northern virginia area and i'd actually hiked out later than everybody else and uh got into the trail later and so i was hiking by myself and so i camped in that shelter completely by myself um so just out in the middle of the wilderness in the woods completely by myself and i was so incredibly content it was that's great it was awesome you stayed in a place you heard gunshots one night right oh yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was bad yeah yeah so i forgot about that so yeah no i was hiking and um i was hiking along and uh it, it looked it looked like rain uh it looked like it was gonna rain and i came to this place it was a it was an old schoolhouse um from like the 1800s and they actually have it open uh, for hikers to use and there's and there's a little bit of, um, there's like some uh, resupply stuff in there that you can get. People have kind of dropped off. Um, but you can actually stay there if you want to. Um, and so it's this old, old you know, schoolhouse, one-room schoolhouse. Um, they have benches in there that the kids, the students used to sit on. And, and a couple of them are pushed together. And it actually makes like a really good little sleeping pa- platform. And so, um, like I said, it was kind of getting late and it looked like rain. And, you know, that place was completely covered. So I was like, well, I'll just stay here. And so around, so, you know, we go to bed super early. Oh, yeah. We're typically asleep by 7.30. Sure. 7.30 or 8. And so around midnight, I am awoken to the sound of two guys pulling up in a car, hopping out, and then uh, several gunshots or maybe they were fireworks. Either way, it was right. really loud. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess everything is kind of mag- magnified when you're when you're used to uh, quiet for the most part. Well, and I had this rule that I never camp anywhere near. Uh, I, I never anywhere closer than half a mile to a road. Sure, there's always yahoos that can run right. um, yeah. when you're that close to a road. And this schoolhouse was right on a road, and so I was kind of breaking that rule. Yeah, but I did not expect to be woken up at midnight to the sound <laughs> of gunshots, and so then I laid awake for for an hour or so um just kind of wondering wh- what that was and and are they coming back and sure did they know i was in there or were they just shooting or, or or what was going on but um yeah that was that was scary yeah all right now how much snow did you encounter early so when i first started i started um so the trail starts in in, in georgia and uh, when i first started i I had really good weather. It was about 60 degrees or so. Um, But as I hiked along, when I got to the Smokies, it turned cold. Um, It turned really, really cold, Uh, like like 10 degrees. Yeah, yeah, that's cold. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's cold. And so we got got hit with an ice storm um, the first night. So the first two days in the Smokies were were great, Um, cold but beautiful and clear. And then we got hit with an ice storm and then a snowstorm after that. And so then I hiked in snow for probably a week or so after that, um, and it was cold. Yeah, I'm it sure. It was cold, but I did not mind hiking in the cold. Was it slick? Was it, was it slick in places? Well, it, those trails are there are, are pretty laid out and pretty straightforward through the Smokies for the most part. They, they are. Um, there, there were some sections where, uh, where it was kind of iced over, um, and a lot of people will bring – Spikes, the right. hiker spikes, and right. attached to your shoes. I didn't have anything like that, and I didn't ever really, um, I didn't really feel like I, I needed them. Right. Ever. 
red zone. But there, there absolutely were some some slick spots. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I I do remember from your videos that uh, you had the opportunity to go through the Smokies and all their balls and all that stuff with unobstructed views because it was winter time, no leaves. You got some really beautiful pictures during that time. Oh, for sure. I got some really, really good views. Um, so the the first two days in the Smokies, it was it was clear, and I, I was able to see you know for miles. I was actually um, uh, on a fire tower with 360 degree views, absolutely gorgeous. Right. Um, and then and then when the ice storm hit, I was in an, I was in an area of the Smokies that typically have really really beautiful views, um, but I was completely socked in. Right. So I, I didn't have the far off views, but I did have the the views of the of the trees being iced. Sure, over. the winter views that are yeah. there. I mean that's magic too. It, it really was. It was. Um, but I said, as soon as I finished the Smokies, I, I said, you know, I'm definitely going back and sure. hiking that section. Sure. Yeah. One of your favorites. Uh, it was. Yeah, for sure. It was It was really, really pretty. Um, really good hiking. Uh, Where, er, early on, it was my it was my favorite section, and it, it remained my favorite section for a long time. And, and, and what became your favorite section? I would say... Uh, the section of, of New Hampshire, um, from the Kinsmans all the way through the Presidentials up the Wildcat Mountains, um, really, really hard hiking. I mean, like, I can't even describe how hard. I mean, just next level. I mean, it's not like hiking around here. We, right. We have some challenging hikes for sure, and we have some tall mountains. Right. Us. Right. Um, but the way they design the trails there, they don't they don't use switchbacks. Right. You're basically just straight, straight hiking up a rock fall, <laughs> straight up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, but it's, but the views there are absolutely gorgeous. The views I got from Franconia Ridge were absolutely amazing. Um, my, probably my favorite. So oh, that's favorite. good. That's good. Yeah. Now, I, I, from what I could view from your videos, it seems like Maine is one pond after another. It 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 kind of appears that way in the videos for sure, because um, and the trail takes you by a ton of them, um, but there's also a lot of of climbing yeah. in elevation there as well, um, especially at the beginning. Um, and it's one of my one of my viewers had commented that uh, New Hampshire and the White Mountains beat you up, and then and then Southern Maine grinds you into dust, and when I got there, I really felt that quote. No. <laughs> I really felt it. Um, we were all so, so tired right. after after New Hampshire, and we kind of had this idea in our head that, oh, well, we're, we're through the White Mountains. We're right. out of New Hampshire. It's, we're going we're gonna to be good now. And then we got into southern Maine, and it was even harder. Wow. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was challenging. That, and I think we were tired as well. Sure. Yeah. What part did you dislike the most? That's so easy. <laughs> That's so easy to answer. Pennsylvania. Really? It was, just, it was awful. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pennsylvania people, but that was awful. Um, it felt like they had a strip of land that they couldn't do anything else with, so they said, here, you can have this, put your trail here. And it was just awful. Um, it was close to roads. It was close to the interstate. It was rocky. Now, I'm not talking about rocky to where you could just bounce from boulder to boulder or just avoid them. With, it was just a, a path of rocks, jabby, pointy rocks, and you're just walking on top of jabby, pointy rocks all day long. Um, the views were minimal. The trail was not interesting. Uh, I, I noticed that it's the king of Appalachian Trail graffiti, too, it looked to me to be. It's so weird. It's so weird. Like, why are people going out and spray painting rocks? And 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 the and the folks there are are trying their best. They've 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 gone out and cleaned the rocks, and it's expensive to do that. I talked to some trail maintainers, and it's real expensive to clean the rocks, and um and they're and they're doing their best. And there was actually one whole section of the trail that they rerouted away from a beautiful rocky outcropping because people were spray painting it so much. Um, so, yeah, it was just... 
What's up, people from Pennsylvania? Why do you want us graffiti up everything? It was strange. It, it really was. Um, the little the little towns we walked to through were uh, interesting. The the people were nice. Um, but it it was it was rough. It was rough areas. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that was my least favorite section. I, I I saw ponds. Did you get any any of those ponds? Uh, so up up in in Maine when I was um, in the hundred mile wilderness, I was kind of taking my time through that section, and I basically planned it out to where I'd be at a pond every single night, uh, and I took a swim at each, each night uh, through the hundred mile wilderness. Were they cold? Uh, they weren't actually. Yeah, oh really? You would, you would think that yeah, be cold, but um, I, I guess they were shallow enough to where the water was was warm, warm enough. Yeah. Well, I, I saw you avoided uh, leeches at some point. Yeah, so I, I was, I was really leery about getting in the ponds because I knew that some of them did have leeches, um, and so I would always look kind of before I got in. Right. And the, one of the last ones that I got in, in I think it was, I have been rain, Rainbow Lake. I'm not sure, um, but anyway, I went out and swam, cleaned up, had a nice dip, and then a little while later. I went back down to the pond just to try and catch the sunset, and I was looking down at the water, and I saw three or four. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't know if maybe they just came out in the evening or if Could I just didn't see them before. But anyway, none of them attached to. Me. Well, that's so good. I mean, that's that's that that is a, that is a plus, no doubt. For sure. I, um, uh, now, let's see. Let's, you want to talk about your family get there in Summerton, or you want to talk about that now? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so I had this. I had a, a tracker that I kept up with, so it was kind of a, um, a daily log, and it, I would put in my miles, and I, I could also put in some notes. And it was, it was it's a great way to just kind of keep up with, with everything daily, and it would also kind of give me an estimated finish time. And so as I was going, my estimated finish time was – was inching up earlier and earlier and so um originally i thought i could maybe sum it around the between the 12th and the 15th but then i kind of slowed down i slowed way down when we got to the whites when we got to the right in the main. um so anyway we, we'd always planned that the that the family would come up and summit with me um and so as i was kind of watching the tracker it looked closer and closer to around the 18th or 19th was going to be my summit day. And my older son, Caleb, um, whose trail name is Pop-Tart, he had a, uh, a work commitment that, you know, he was definitely not going to be able to get out of right. that was on the 18th. And so the kind of the soonest that he would be able to sort of be there and, and be a part of it would be around the 22nd or 23rd. Um, and so we kind of pushed out the summit date to there and 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 just so you know it's like getting into baxter state park which is where mount katahdin is which is the which is the northern terminus of the appalachian trail getting in there is kind of complicated you have to have a reservation um you have to have a parking pass and and they all those reservations from parking passes kind of sell out really quickly and so it's kind of a and plus i mean the family would have to fly there sure they have to rent a place yeah rent a car it's it's all it's all really kind of complicated right yeah i agree Um, and so we kind of set this we kind of set this summit date pretty far pretty far in advance in order to coordinate all these elements Uh, um and as i got closer i started to make up ground once i got out of out of new hampshire and out of the southern maine and so i probably could have summited probably four or five days sooner than what i did right um but it but so it allowed me to go through the hundred mile wilderness, which is basically the last section of the trail, uh, at kind of a leisurely pace. A lot of people just when they get there, they just want to be done. Sure, hammer themselves through it. Yeah, and they just want to push, you know, twenty, twenty five, twenty eight mile days through there. And I could have, I could have done that. The terrain sort of allows for that. Um, but I was really, really happy that I didn't do that, and I was able to just kind of take my time. I did, uh, I did. A 12 mile day, a 14 mile day. I mean, definitely lower mile days, and um, and just kind of took my time through that section. Um, and so it worked out to where, so I kind of stretched it out to where where the family would meet me and uh, and come and pick me up, and uh, 
and then we summited on the 23rd. I watched the video this morning. Uh, um, it looked pretty. It looked like a pretty high, rocky, straight up climb. It was. It was all of that. <laughs> it was. It <laughs> I was. mean, I mean, obviously. The mileage was not much for you, and I noticed on it that you handled it really, really well. But for someone without trail legs, that's a pretty tough hike. Oh, no, that is that is a hard hike. I mean, that is a hard hike. So it's it's 5.2 from the from the kind of parking area, Katahdin Stream Campground parking area, up up the Hunt Trail, which is which is the Appalachian Trail um, that leads you. There's, there's a number of trails that lead you to the summit of Mount Katahdin. But the Appalachian Trail is the Hunt Trail, and that's probably one of the hardest. I, I think it probably is. Yeah, I think I think all the trails to the top of Katahdin are probably difficult, but I think that's probably the hardest, yeah. um, or one of the hardest. Um, it's five point two miles up, which I mean doesn't sound like very much, but it's basically four thousand feet of elevation gain over four miles. Right, um, and it's not it's not like hiking at your local state park no. or your local trail i mean it is it's, it's basically, not a state maintained road that you're hiking on no it's not an old logging road it's nothing right. like that it's basically bouldering pulling yourself up over rocks scrambling pretty so much scrambling that, yeah for about three miles <laughs> so. you know uh, uh, yeah i noticed that um your family was struggling a bit but they but they got through it you know I, I, yeah no i thought i thought they did amazing um like I said, it's a really, really hard climb, and if you're not used to that kind of bouldering and scrambling, and, and it, it can be definitely intimidating. You also got your pretty good day to go up. I mean, socked in a little bit on the way up, but but it, but I think the contrast, as opposed to a beautiful clear day, I think the views that you got with the contrast in the clouds, as opposed to just a totally clear blue sky. Might have even been better, you know. It it gave, it gave some perspective, yeah. And it was um, I I told I told the honey stinger all along. I don't care if it's uh, you know completely socked in. If there's no views, or sure. I just, I, I just yeah. I want I want to get there and touch yeah. that song. I understand. Um, but but I knew that I knew that having some I mean having some views is always better. yeah. It's always, <laughs> it's always I agree. I totally agree. Um, but I agree with what you're saying. That kind of having the perspective of, of some clouds and then some views kind of allows you to see the majesty of, of both of them. Yeah, it does. And and the fact that um, it also brings in perspective that it's a rugged place. It's a rugged climb. It's uh, uh, not not very easy. And I could also see that that Katahdin could be a, a real troublesome thing in uh, cold, cold or wet weather. Absolutely, you know, yeah, absolutely. Windy. So, I don't think you even had much wind, did you? As opposed to what you could have had. Yeah, no, because um, I definitely had some some climbs on some mountains that were above tree line that were exposed that mm. were in really bad conditions and so i'm so very thankful i didn't have that on yeah. the top. one of my good buddies that i hiked with quite a bit um big t he went up on a rainy day yeah i saw it it looked terrible it was so rough it looked, bad for him yeah it, was it, rough. it looked it looked tough and and you know it uh uh yeah it looked really hard on a day like that so a couple a couple mountaintops that i went over that were exposed in some bad weather i went over musalaki um, in in rain and uh, when I got up to the top of the exposed area above tree line it was like needles hitting you the the rain uh, just being pushed onto you so hard you can't see and it's just white out conditions and it's just it's it's scary and so um, I'm really glad that we didn't have that on guitar right. another one I was up on uh, White Cap Mountain uh, in in Maine there in the hundred mile wilderness and and I hiked up, and I got right before tree line, and I could see how windy and how uh, rainy it was. It, it wasn't even raining at the time, but there was a, a rain cloud just kind of sitting on that peak, um, and the winds were just gusting. And so when I finally broke tree line and I stepped out, I, I literally got pushed huh. off of the trail into the bushes. <laughs> oh, that's... And I just fought my way through that section and just finally made it back to tree line and, and just and hustled down from there. I saw... I saw through the hundred mile wilderness 
maybe a little before that you were pretty well uh, committed to the uh, bug mesh. The bugs in Maine were insane. They were absolutely ridiculous. That, is that the worst along the trail? It, 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 was, it was horrible. I mean, I, I had this, I had this uh, was it Burt's bug spray? or oh, I can't remember the brand, but it's like 100 deep. And I was just spraying that stuff on me. You know that stuff's not good. Oh, yeah. You know? No, it's <laughs> not. No, I not care. No. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it it just barely kind of kept them away. But right. anything else, whatever other kind you try, they just laughed at you. Know, it's it's like, just, yeah, we've seen this before. <laughs> and so, and but they would find the spot that you haven't sprayed. Just, <laughs> That's funny how they can do that. Or into you. It was So it was a kind of a... It was a mixture. You'd have gnats that would float around and just sort of attack your eyes. You had the mosquitoes just just swarming around in your ears all over you. And then you had the black flies, which when they get on you, they just, you don't even know that they're there until they start kind of boring into you. By then it's too late. They've dug a hole in you and you're just spurting out blood. It's awful. And then you got and then you got the deer ticks that yeah. are just buzzing around. And, and those things are just, you smack them and they just kind of laugh at you. Mm. So it was, um, yeah, it was rough. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that you you pretty much had it, and you would put you would cut your videos fairly short to put your stuff back on, you know. Yeah, and and it made the drinking throughout the day. Oh, I'm sure difficult. It made eating difficult. Um, you just didn't want to stop. Uh, you couldn't stop. You would just get attacked. But then it was weird because there would be kind of little pockets where you'd sort of have. A break from them. Huh. Yeah. I don't, and I don't know what the difference was. What the difference was. Yeah. Yeah, let's do what we're talking about eating. Let's, let's talk about eating along the trail. So I'd say the biggest thing is it's impossible to consume enough calories while you're hiking. Um, and I wasn't the fastest hiker, so for me to do 20-plus mile days, I would start hiking by about 6.30. Um and I would basically hike till probably about seven thirty. Sure. Or so. um, and when you when you're moving that much, it's just hard to consume enough calories. Um, so my day would start uh, around four thirty or five. Um, I'd wake up. I'd make my uh, oatmeal. I'd make two packets of oatmeal and black coffee every morning. Um, then I'd get packed up. And I'd start hiking, and then I would have second breakfast. Sure. And that was typically um, a power bar of some sort. Um, cliff bars were kind of my go-to. Uh, and I had a lot of trail buddies that absolutely can't stand the cliff bar right. anymore. And I would, I, I could eat one right now. Oh, here you go. <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's good, though, that, yeah. that your stuff didn't get old. Uh, uh, tortilla shells, I guess you're really still uh, big on them. I, I, I mean, so, yeah, so that would be my lunch. I would stop. I would have... Uh, a tortilla with a packet of tuna in it, um, and then a tortilla with peanut butter and some sort of candy yeah. or gummy Gum, worms. Gummy worms, yeah. And that, those got filmed a lot. Just yeah, they, they did. They were kind of visual. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, chips, uh, Cheetos, any kind of any kind of high calorie chip, um, and then like some cookies uh, and some candy. That would sort of be my lunch, um, and. I used a lot of electrolyte packets in my water sure. to try and make it taste better. Uh, there were some times when the when the water was really kind of yellow tinted because of the tannins, mm-hmm. um, and that's a little bit less appetizing. It didn't yeah. taste bad, but it just sort of looks bad. Right. Um, and so the flavor packets would help with that too, just kind of get some color to the water. Um, and then, uh, and then I would eat bars kind of throughout the day. And then uh, when I got to camp, kind of my go-to meal was was uh, double ramen slim jim. Sure. Yeah, I seen the video on that. <laughs> so uh, two packets of, of ramen noodles, uh, three slim jims, um, uh, kind of all cooked up together. Um, and I would usually use one of the flavor packets, maybe one and a half. Um, and I know those things are you know filled with sodium, sure. and whatnot, but I mean I was yeah, yeah I, I, sweating. Yeah. Profusely sure, I was long. during the hot times so, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'd I'd have some chips again. 
I'd have some candy, candy. <laughs> just really what was that whatever was in my pocket. right yeah that um uh well now let's talk water a little bit I, I, of course you had a filter system that you used mm-hmm. for yes. were you ever in any any places where you were really in dire straits of needing water uh, so there were definitely some sections where there were really long water carries, um, like kind of in between water sources. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of them come to mind. Um, one in Virginia, um, where I was up on a ridge line for probably, I think, close to 11 miles, mm-hmm. which is kind of a long time. And, and the thing about that particular section was we had kind of a heat wave, and the and the trees hadn't leafed out yet. Right, and so I was up on a ridge line. It was hotter than normal, and the trees were providing no coverage. Um, and so that kind of caught me off guard a little bit because up to that point, getting water was really easy. It was right. really plentiful, and it was everywhere. Um, and then we kind of got on that that sort of long exposed ridge line, and that was um, that was that was a rough section because of that, uh, and just being out of water. And then. Uh, there were sections in Pennsylvania, really long sections in Pennsylvania, where there was no water. Um, but thankfully, trail angels would leave water jugs at trailheads. Sure. And so, uh, so I was able to kind of get water at, at some of those trailheads just from water jugs. So all right. Was, let's. All right. First, before we go, I'm, I want to go to trail angels since you just brought that up. But what did you filter your water with? Uh, yeah. So um, my my water filter of choice was the Catadine Be Free. Uh, a lot of people use the Sawyer Squeeze, mm-hmm. um, but I just like the the ease and the simplicity of the of the Catadine. It has a uh, a bag you know, it attaches to the filter, so you just kind of scoop with the bag, scoop or hold it under a water flow, and then it just filters straight from there into your water bottle. Did what? And then what kind of water bottle did you use? So I had two smart water bottles, um, and I actually got them at the very start, and I still had the same two at the very end. That's crazy. That's just that's that's crazy. We can't go to a, you know, you can't go anywhere and, and still have the same water bottle these days. So no, um, Those two held up the whole time. I had stickers on them. Uh, I guess that sells a lot for smart water in smart water bottles. Well, I mean, it, it, it shows you how, how much those things can take, and it also shows you, like, how much they're not going to break down. True. I mean, yeah, when they, yeah, yeah. So I did not want to contribute. I mean, it was my, my little part to – kind of helping the environment was just sure. holding on to the same two the whole yeah, time. Yeah, that's great. Um, now let's talk Trail Angels. Let's t- just tell the listeners about Trail Angels. So, yeah, so uh, Trail Angels come in, in many forms. Um, it could be, you know, somebody that just is out, uh, you know, section hiking or day hiking, and they offer you a snack, you know, yeah. along the way. And I, and I had that happen so many times, and I was so thankful for that. Um, trail angels are also people that kind of come that sometimes come out to trailheads and and do like a whole hiker feed and and put on like a you know a whole feed for for any hiker coming through. You had one kind of attach themselves to you at some point, did you not? So I had a, I had a great trail angel. His name was um, was PT. His trail name was PTL, and um, he had hiked the trail in 2022 or 2020, um, and he had had a trail angel support him. And so he wanted to be able to kind of give back to the to the community, and so he always sort of picks out a couple folks that um, that are that are YouTubing um, that he can kind of get to know right. and, and supports them on the trail. And so I was one of the ones that he supported this year. He actually came out to uh, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, uh, and also uh, all the way up to Maine. Wow! And helped me out. I mean, that's pretty dedicated. It, it really was. It was, and it was amazing um, just to be able to come out of the woods and, and see him and, and his wife Sue. And uh, and they and they fed us and they just were so nice and it was just uh, yeah it was awesome. But you had several people along the way that did similar things also, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there was a, there was another couple um, that were there in uh, in their home state of New Jersey and they came out and, and fed us a couple times and and um, just uh, you know sat with us and, and talked with us and um, it was yeah it was really amazing. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I guess that does restore some faith in humanity. It, yeah, it really does, um, and not just the trail angels on the trail. Oh, and the, and the trail angel I mentioned who came and picked me up. Yeah. In, oh yeah. And when I got bit by the dog, I mean, I, I tried to give him money at the end. He said, "Well, how about five dollars?" I was like, "Well, I don't have a five dollar bill. I have a ten. Here, take this." And he's like, "No, 
I just want five. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. Wow. He wouldn't even take money, and he was with me all day. I mean, it's just that kind of stuff. It just makes you just – it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, well, the, how about uh, the locals in towns? How were they towards through hikers? Or Every, every – town I went through was was welcoming I never had an instance where I felt kind of unwelcome right like they didn't really want you here they just tolerate you yeah no it was always very welcoming that's great um, yeah mean. it was it was really cool that that part was was cool I think I mean some of these small towns in in you know very rural Appalachia um they get it you know the trail is sure. a source of income for them yeah it is I um, agree and so some of the you know shuttle drivers that's that's their source sure of income. and um, you had to use them from time to time i, I did and and i uh i had some great uh, shuttle drivers um I had, I had one shuttle driver that we we didn't care much for but um but he got us where we needed to go right and so that was fine that's good i yeah. mean that's, that's pretty small really yeah and i guess the relationships you've built along the way or you can't I, there's no way to touch on those, I don't think. I mean, that's a camaraderie that you would have to be there to understand, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of like a sports team or, or yeah. any other kind of team sure. or, or, or a band yeah. that you're in. You sure. know? I mean, this, the stories you share from, sure. from the road or from yeah. gigs or, or, you know, I mean, so this, yeah, the the bond and, and, the, and the stories that we share and the adventures we shared, it's just... Sure. And amazing. you're pooping in the woods together. I mean, you know. <laughs> we get some separation, <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, you know, we set our tents up right beside sure. each other. You know, uh, we're hearing each other throughout the night. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Right? You yeah, know, I understand that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, it, they become. Uh, uh, it's like what I say when I do these interviews sometimes. After we do these interviews, I know more about uh, people than some of their very close friends do because they sit here and tell me stuff that you, you, your friends or your family doesn't really get to sit down and do this very often, you know? Right. And sometimes you uncover something that you just, like yeah. a story that you, I mean, sure. maybe somebody's wanting to tell and they just don't yeah. hold on to. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. It is. You know, it's a. Uh, but I, I hiked with some great people. Um, so a couple that stand out um, that I had kind of uh, really long time. Um, I'll mention just, uh, well, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I'll just throw out a couple of names. So, um, you know, we all go by trail names. Sure. So a um, young kid named Grateful, uh, another young kid named Big Tuna, which I actually named Big Tuna, so I was happy about that. Uh, Radio and Coyote, they were great. Um, a girl named Hellman. Um, hiked through, through the Smokies with them. Um, so, so Gummy Bear, I basically hiked with from around mile fifty, pretty much the entire trail. Yeah, that's um, pretty cool. Y'all were together a lot. There were there were times when it might be a week or so when I don't even you know we don't see each other. He might be a day or two ahead of me, me a day or two ahead right. of him. But we always kind of kept up with each other and always sort of met back up. Um, Odin, I hiked with from Shenandoah pretty much all the way through the end. Um, great guy, um, old, older gentleman, military background, um, but just this kind of calm quiet demeanor um I, I don't, it's great hiking with him um river uh, uh young 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 kid from uh the main area um stickers uh, uh younger he's younger than me 30s um yeah. from from richmond virginia area um those were kind of my my immediates um but there's so many others that i that i met along the way and hiked with for brief periods or, or short, you know. Short and you periods. had a cousin come out and actually hike with you a yeah, section, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so my, my cousin, um, uh, Bill, Bill um, he came out. Um, it was funny because he, he asked me early on, he was like, hey, I got a crazy idea. Would I be able to, would you mind if I joined you and hiked the state of Massachusetts with you? He's from there. And I was like, no, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. And so he was like, all right, I'm going to get in shape. And, you know, we'll, We'll, we'll hike the whole state, you know. It's kind of the plan. Um, and so he was kind of getting in shape for, like, 14 to 15-mile days. Right, yeah. Which is kind of what I was hiking at the time. Sure. And by the time I got there, I was hiking 20 to 25-mile right. days pretty regularly. So um, he was kind of planning on 14 to 15-mile days, but 
couple couple days came up a little shorter than that. I think we did a couple 12, 12 miles. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and, and then we did a sixteen mile day. Um, so, uh, yeah, but it was so awesome hiking with him. It was so much fun um, just to be able to, to hike with with my cousin sure. I haven't seen in so many years, and um, we had a great time. That's great. We had a great time. That's great. Um, you did it faster than you thought you were going to, right? I did. So originally, I thought around uh, kind of mid-August would mm-hmm. be my, my completion date. Um, and I was basing that on 15-mile days with a zero every week. Right. Um, and so you know, zero is basically you, you hike zero miles that day. Right. I was thinking I would need one a week just to kind of recover. Um, but I actually only took seven zeros the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that in itself is pretty amazing. Well, and – and one of them was like just an extra day when I was just trying to kill time to try and right. Make you took a double zero, like waiting on your family, right? I did, and it, it, I was going stir crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to hike. Did you hike? Did you walk up here today? I, I did not. I should have. I had to go by my mom's house. And okay, do some chores for her. Okay, all right. Uh, I was just just curious. Uh, well, now we're to the big. We're back. I don't believe for one minute that you're done hiking or or that hiking adventures are – I don't want to ever be in a tent again. I don't ever want to – I don't believe that's coming because you you actually – I think you said it, and I think you're right. You kind of have a knack for it. I mean – Well, it's it's funny. Like you can actually get good at hiking – like you think, like well, you're just walking. I mean, yeah. What does getting good at hiking mean? Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of people's body can't take it. A lot, and obviously, you have an efficiency that allows you, and and an endurance that allows you to uh, make a long day out of out of walking. And, and, a, and an appreciation and a love of it too. I mean, because mm-hmm. a, a lot of folks did it and they were grumpy the whole sure. time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. I mean, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not being grumpy. I'm not complaining. I'm not. I'm not complaining. <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure that I stayed positive on the videos because a lot of my viewers were, and they would tell me, you know, hey, I'm watching from my office or I'm right. watching from cubic, sure, cube, yeah, you know, cube land here at, at work, and right. and you're my outlet. So sure, I didn't want to be Gr- grumpy a pants, yeah, downer. Yeah, I mean, I'm out here getting to experience something that they, true that they want to or can't. Or I mean, or, I mean, in a lot of ways, you were living the life. I mean, really, your biggie was was hike point to point neat. I mean, it was it was <laughs> pretty simple, really. I mean, it was it was. Um, yeah, where am I gonna where am I gonna sleep? Yeah. What am I gonna eat? Yeah. And where am I gonna poop? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, pretty much, you know. And occasionally, I can get a shower <laughs> and wash my clothes. Yeah, no, that was yeah, and that was kind of it uh, in a nutshell. So um, it's funny you mentioned get a shower and wash clothes. So through New York, it was crazy expensive. It was so okay, expensive. It's New York, you know, that area. Yeah, and there weren't um, there weren't hostels. Um, so hostels are, are, you know, inexpensive option to, to both stay sure. and, and also laundry and shower. Yeah. And, that, and that's kind of what, you know, what you're looking for. And so it was so expensive. Um, I basically stayed on trail, but there was this, there was a kind of a long stretch. And um, I was hiking with this good buddy named Icebox. I, I forgot to mention, I hiked with Icebox for a long time. Great, great trail buddy. But um, we were at this kind of deli in New York and just kind of, right there on the side of the trail and uh, we're eating some food and we're, and we're talking to some of the locals and we're talking to this guy and he was like, well, you know, what do you guys, what do you guys need? And we both said like, really what we need is a shower and laundry. Yeah. And I was like, well, I, I have a place that I'm renovating. It's about three blocks up from here and you are welcome to come by and use it. And it was not, it was not creepy or anything, right. you know, it was just cool. And so we were like, are you sure? I mean, we smell. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm renovating this place. It's kind of a wreck, but I've got a washer and dryer and I've got a shower. You're welcome to come use it. So we walked over there to his place and used the shower and got our, got our laundry done and, and hiked back out. And um, that was awesome. We was really neat. Well, you know, speaking of hiking over there to do that now, give me the exact mileage of the Appalachian Trail. So the trail from, from, 
Springer Mountain to Katahdin is 2,198.4. Right. And, that, and that's this year. It changes like you, you, from year to year occasionally, right? It does because they reroute right. and they'll you know, come up with new sections or kind of right. change sections and that kind of thing. So, But that's not really where I'm going with it is, you know, you're probably hike more like 2,500 miles. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the exact is, but, I mean, just figure every single night you have to go – get water you have right to set up your camp i mean sometimes going to get water you might have to hike point two or point three down the yeah. trail to a water source so another half a mile at, at least a, a day right plus how many times i watched you on videos walk yourself into town to towns you know walk around the towns Absolutely. you know yeah. so yeah so when you get to town i mean you have to resupply. You, sure. One of the main reasons for going to town is right, exactly. to get your resupply. It's also to eat at a restaurant. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, nothing is more exciting than, like, that last couple of miles right before town, and you can start to hear the cars on the road, <laughs> and, and you can almost smell the, the food. <laughs> you get so excited. But, um, yeah, when you get to town, you gotta you got to walk yourself around. And so, um, like, I remember I did, uh, I did the Kinsman's in new hampshire it was like a 17 mile day really hard day um and then i got and then i so then i was going into a hostel there in lincoln and i had to walk a mile to the place where you can get picked up by a shuttle driver um and so then the shuttle driver drove me into lincoln and took me to the hostel and so then i I did my laundry got my shower and so then i hiked into town went to a restaurant then i had to hike to the shop and save Mm -hmm get my resupply sure and then i had to of course hike back right to, to the hostel so i mean that was i don't know how many miles on top of that 17 mile day that i already did you even had to thumb a few places too right yeah i did i did i got some i got some good hitches um uh it, they no, no scary stories yeah, or anything good. All, all good people pick well, me up well, so. it seems like it that area th- those areas are are filled with um pretty good people I, I guess it's a slower lifestyle and and all most all of those places than yeah. even here in shelby well and, and folks are used to seeing true. Hikers and, and used to picking them up true so. you also uh rented a bike one day did you not to ride around somewhere well i it was actually um i didn't even have to pay it was oh, free. Really? yeah uh. so um so i was in bennington vermont and uh there's a former through hiker who has a bike shop there and so any through hiker that comes through is welcome to come by and get a loaner bike. Oh, that's cool. I mean, that's really cool. Um, it's about, it was probably about a mile, mile and a half from where I was <laughs> of, staying. Of course, you had to walk a mile there. and I mean, It cost you three miles to get to ride a bike. It, it did, but it was a really, really cool way to get to see a lot more of sure. Bennington than I would have seen right. any other way. So where we were staying was kind of, was kind of, uh, you know, kind of across the tracks type right. of a place. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, but then when I was, I was able to kind of ride my bike up into the the, um, I was the nicer part of town. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, the houses were gorgeous, and there was this big monument that they that they had up on top of the hill. Um, it was really cool. I, I would have gone. It, it, you had to pay to go up in the monument. It was I don't, it wasn't that much right. money, but I don't know, and I would have done it. But it was during the time when the Canadian wildfire fires were really bad yeah. and you couldn't see right. very far at all. Did that affect you much? Um, a, a breathing wise it didn't, re- that never really affected me much. It just, the only time it really affected me was just it kind of took away a couple of the views that right. I could have had yeah. from some of the mountain sure. peaks. But. Um, also, you were, I saw you in a, maybe a kayak one day. I, I did. So that I took the two, I took the double zero uh, up at Shaw's uh, Hostel in Monson, Maine. And Monson is this cute little town i mean it's got a gas station a general store and two restaurants wow and, and a hostel <laughs> and, and it's got a lake um and so the the hostel there has um two paddle boards a kayak and a canoe and you're welcome to to take them out and so i took the kayak out on that pond and just paddled uh, a long time and right. really enjoyed myself. It was, it was the first kind of arm workout. Sure, yeah, I'm sure it is, other than picking up your pack, yeah. Uh, uh, all right, I want to go this for more hikers than listeners. 
let's run down your equipment and the equipment that you liked and the equipment that you would use again. Okay. Um, so I'll kind of start with the big three. Um, so the big three is uh, your backpack. I had the uh, REI Flash 55, uh, which is sort of a – it's a lightweight – pack it's not a ultralight lightweight pack mm-hmm. it still has a frame um but it carried really well it was a 55 liter which was uh which was perfect for when i started it carried all my winter gear really well uh towards the end it was way more packed than i needed I could, right. I could have been fine with a 40 liter um and i probably uh it was it was a great pack it held up really well and it did it did wonderfully um i'll probably switch it out sure for something maybe a little smaller and a little lighter um, for future for future hikes, um, my tent was the uh, Z Pack Duplex, which is absolutely amazing. Um, can't recommend that tent enough. Uh, it's really expensive, <laughs> but it's, you get Plus your you home. Pay. Though I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, as opposed to uh, renting a place for uh, five months, uh, pretty cheap. If, if, if you if you look at it that way, it's definitely cheap. Um, yeah. and so it kept kept the some really nasty rainstorms never got wet bugs um, did it keep your bugs out kept the bugs out there were a couple of times uh there was one time in particular in, in new hampshire where i was hiking and i wanted to keep i kind of wanted to keep going and do a few more miles but the bugs were so incredibly bad it was late in the evening uh, it was like around seven thirty or so and so i just had to just stop and I just threw my tent up as quick as i could and jumped in because the mosquitoes were so yeah, incredibly bad i can understand um but yeah so that was so the du- the, the duplex um awesome awesome shelter it uses my trekking poles um so it's kind of uh, it's super lightweight um dyneema fabric anyway i could i could talk about it forever sure it's a great tent um my quilt um uh, so a lot of people use a sleeping bag some people use a quilt so a quilt is open on on the bottom um, so it's a little bit lighter because you don't have fabric that goes all the way around. Right. Um, basically, the, the reason behind that is because when you're laying on top of a, of a down sleeping bag, the part that you're sleeping on isn't given any insulation because it's compressed. Sure. So um, anyway, my quilt was the uh, enlightened equipment, um, and I actually had a zero degree. Or no, it was 10 degree. 10 degree. Yeah, 10 degree. And I kept that the whole time. Um, it opens up like a blanket or like a quilt. Right. So, um, so when it was hot, I could just kind of like drape it over. Yeah. Um, so it was great. It, it did. It did amazing. Um, uh, so I, yeah, highly recommend it. Um, that's kind of the that's kind of the big three. Um, sleeping pad. What did you use? Sleeping pad. I had the uh, Thermarest uh, Neo Air X Lite, um, which is twelve ounces. It's a very popular pad on the trail. Um, it did great up until the very end when some of the Baffles. You blew some of them out somewhere, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, some of the ba- baffles blew out, and uh, so then I kind of had to rig it up and sort of tie it off to where those baffles didn't get. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. I, I had to kind of MacGyver. Sure. But um, so I'll I'll be getting a, I'll be getting a new one of those, but I, I'll I'll be replacing it with the same one. Right. Um, my cook set was uh, the. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> the it stash, worked. The stash. It worked. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't even remember the name. It was it was awesome though. Uh, worked worked great. All kind of contained in one little unit. The um, little you use can you use canisters with that? I use canisters, yeah. And I'd go through. Um, I don't know how often, but I usually carried. A lot of times I would carry two of the canisters, right? Um, just because I had kind of had this fear of, of running out. I mean, I could cold soak all my right. all my food if I wanted to, yeah. but nobody. I, I don't want to. Do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Not after not after twenty miles. No. No. Uh-uh. Um, uh, uh, electronics. I had a uh, um, I had a battery bank that's like the lightest one on the market. Um, the night core it was only like 5.8 ounces but it was a 10,000 milliamp and so that would charge my phone like two and a half times um, so I never really ran out of charge oh, that's good on, on my phone um, my headlamp was also a night core which was a great little headlamp super light and super efficient um, charge fast and it, and it was yeah it was it did so it didn't have batteries so it just it had right. you know you just recharge it yeah um, so you don't have the weight of like, like the battery yeah something. yeah um, and you could just recharge it, so right. super efficient. Um, so that was great. Um, my, my water filter, which I mentioned, was the Katadyne V-Free. Mm-hmm. Um, worked great the whole time. Now it would kind of slow down, but all you have to do is just replace the filter. Sure. Um, not not too much money, and then it's super fast again. 
Um, my trekking poles were uh, were just some kind of cheap ones off of Amazon, um, Cascade Mountain Tech or something like that, $30 poles. Mm-hmm. Um, they did great. They did fine. Um, I am probably going to upgrade and get some maybe like the REI brand or something. Sure. Just a step above, um, just to have for next hikes. Yeah. Just the Cascade Mountain Tech were like $30. And right. for $30, they were great. But I just like the locking mechanism yeah. on some of the a little bit more expensive mm-hmm. ones, just a little bit simpler. Um, so I'll, I'll probably upgrade on those. Um, my rain jacket, there is no rain jacket yeah, no. that will keep you dry. From I can yeah. tell you from 50 years of running, there's no rain jacket that's going to keep you dry. <laughs> there's no. I mean, people are talking about, like, oh, this and that and this and that. There's no range. I mean, you're either going to get wet eventually yeah. or you're going to sweat from the inside sure. or both. Both, yeah. Um, but so anyway, I had a um, I had a rain jacket that I was that I was happy with. It was one that I had already, um, uh, just a North Face one that sure. I had. So I carried it the whole time. But it also made a good insulation shell. Sure, I understand. Well. Yeah, sure. Wind shell. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, my hiking shirt that I have on, yes. <laughs> it kept the whole time. Yes. And my hiking shorts. And what is that shirt? So this is a uh, Patagonia. Um, I can't really remember the fabric material. Right. Call it, but it's a sun hoodie, basically. Yes. Um, and so I would have the hood up a lot of the time. Sure. Not just for the sun, but also for the bugs. Sure. Uh, it would help kind of keep the mosquitoes and the bugs out of my ears. Right. Um, and it sort of gave me a little level of protection, kept them off my neck. Yeah. Um, and it's long sleeve, sure. which um, a lot of people are like, you hiked with a long sleeve with a hood in the summer, but it's not. It's, it's, it's lightweight. Sure. It breathes, and it, and it um, wicks moisture. Sure. It, it, it was perfect. It was I, obviously, they need to send you like a dozen of those because you've worn <laughs> that thing for five months. I, and, I mean, every morning, that's, you know, I would switch out at night. I had sleep clothes that I would wear. Um, but my sleep shirt was just another version of this. Right. And then I'd have um, just some kind of like, you know, pajama pants, sleep pants, you know, that I slept in. And that was basically my clothes. Your your shoes. My shoes were the uh, Topo Athletic Ultra Venture 3, and I went through five pair of those. Um, They they were great. So I I got one pair in um, Delaware Water Gap, which is right on the border of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Uh, And that pair... Lasted me for 600 miles. I, I wore them through, um, through New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, and half of New Hampshire. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that's some pretty rocky places, too. They were. Um, and the last pair I got, I thought would be in better shape than what they are now, um, just because I didn't have as many miles to hike in them um, by the time I got that last pair. But the, the last... 300 miles they were basically underwater sure i mean that yeah Every day. when I mean, you hike through some the stream crossings were pretty deep at some points we had we had some major stream crossings so there was so much rain so much water um so there's there's like a kind of a um, a stream that they use to measure the output of water um and typically it's around 200 is the measurement unit um and so around 400, it starts to get dangerous. And at times, I was crossing those streams when it was at a, the level was at a thousand. Oh Lord! Which means it was up around you know waist. I, saw, I did see while you were out, a guy did wash away during the rains. Yes, yeah, steady that, Eddie. That was in Vermont. That's yeah. so so incredibly sad. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Were, were were you worried on any of those stream crossings? There were definitely a couple that were sketchy, yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah. kind of when you're when you're in them and you're walking, and you're kind of going slow, but you because you want to put your feet down, right? But then you but also, you also want to get through. Want to get through? Yeah, and yeah. So you're trying to go, and, and you and you're using your trekking poles, and your trekking poles are just vibrating so hard, <laughs> yeah, I mean, rushing be, water. Sure. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were a couple that were yeah, sketchy. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, without a doubt. Falls? Did you fall? <laughs> <laughs> I fell so many times. It was it was so frustrating. Um, I didn't. So my first real fall was in Virginia, and it was one of those ones where I just kind of tripped, and the next thing you know, you're just on your butt, sure. you're mad. And I didn't really fall that that much leading up to then, and I didn't fall that 
much until I kind of got up around Vermont. Once I got up around Vermont, I was trying to go. I was going fast. I was doing, you know, 20 plus True. mile days. Right. But the mud. Oh, the rocks, yeah. I'm sure that had to be slippery. The boards. Sure. They were all slippery. And yeah. There were there were days when I would fall three or four times. I know some of that, some of those boards. I know how boards are from running and other stuff. You know, they get like a scum almost to where they're slick as glass. Film on them. Yeah, film on them. Yeah. You just and if you just take your your, you just kind of lose your your focus for a second, and next thing you know, you're on, you're on, yeah. you're on your butt. And if if you fall backwards, I guess with your pack on, you're a little like a turtle. Yeah, yeah. So the pack definitely saved me a lot of times. Yeah. So a lot of times you kind of walking down these granite slabs and, and they'll have like a layer of moss on them and no oh, yeah water yeah. running because it's raining and yeah you, if you just you just kind of lose your focus for a second next thing you know you boom but, but like you say you a lot of times you'd land on the on your pack on which your pack. is good yeah. i mean it is difficult to get back up it's but soft yeah but but it does help it there was um there were two falls in in um new hampshire that, that were that were kind of bad one was going across uh moose Mount Musilag, uh, which is one of the 4,000 footers. And uh, it was kind of a steep drop off right to my left. And and I took a wrong step and I started to fall. And so I, I kind of threw my body away from that edge. Yeah. So I, I didn't really fall naturally. And so when I fell, my thigh landed right on a rock. Uh, and it was like one of those deep, deep bruise, bruise. Oh, yeah. That hurt for that days. Hurt for day. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. And then there was another fall in New Hampshire where um, I came down on my, on my tail on my tailbone oh so that had to hurt to, to the for side. several days didn't it it did it just hurt for days but um, but those were the only two that were you know. did um did you have to consume a lot of Advil and stuff like that I, I did I did so at the start of the hike I, I didn't want to to take a lot I wanted to right. try and go as far as I could sure. about it and and I didn't really need it at the beginning as much, um, but then I had a couple bouts of tendonitis sure. in my uh, leg, yeah. um, and really the only way to kind of keep hiking was was through Advil. Sure. And so then after that, I basically started taking Advil every single day. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> it just became part of my routine. It, it, it is. I mean, I've I've learned that over the years that it, that sometimes you need, and 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 here's the deal: your body generally. Is, is going to adjust or break down. And sometimes, no matter which way it goes, that adjustment period require medication to just ease it up while it either either breaks down or, or ad- ad- adapts. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, I mean, I tried not to complain about injuries in my videos just because if I – if I even just mentioned kind of an injury or a pain in my video, I, I got a lot of comments, and some of the comments I didn't really need. Right. <laughs> yeah. Know, so. plus, plus, I think I think it would also you make family back here worry more about you too when you're you know am I, yeah, yeah, this is hurting and I, yeah, I can't hardly get out of bed. You know, I mean, exactly. people start and, worrying about you, n- and nobody wants to hear that. But I mean, I could I could have basically. Wind every day. <laughs> Something hurt all the time. Yeah, yeah Something always yeah. hurt. I, 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 no doubt. I'm, I'm sure that's the case. Um, uh, probably still does. <laughs> My knees right now are really, really sore. Really sore. Um, I don't know if it was just, you know, the the adrenaline or or just the routine, but I was able to kind of keep going and still do decent miles through the whole thing right um, but, but my knees hurt <laughs> yeah I mean I mean I, I I can't think that doing that your knees won't hurt you know yeah I mean I mean you know it's it's um, do you have you met Lee Berry yet okay uh, while you were gone the star did a deal about he turned 100 and he is working with z packs to create a newer lighter better version of their tent really yes he's from shelby he hiked the appalachian trail at 84 wow 
and he was for 13 years he was the oldest guy to do it wow that's amazing but i just wonder how much he hurts <laughs> you know yeah there were some there were some so i definitely came across a lot of older hikers and it was way harder for them yeah. than it was the younger kids sure. i mean i hiked with a lot of kids and they would just run by me just banging and not and, and knock out the miles and recover yeah. faster i mean recover. yeah and yeah. and i was able to recover a lot faster um through the beginning in the middle of the hike but towards the end of the sure. hike, my recovery i just couldn't recover the same yeah i do understand that yeah i do it's um uh, sum up your trip it's really hard to kind of sort of put it all into just a nutshell you know just kind of um i mean it, it was it was the adventure that i was looking for um i was looking for an adventure uh and i got it <laughs> was it every bit as good as you thought it would be i think I think probably better, really, to be honest. I, I will have to say that I, I thought from your videos that you were really doing your best to really enjoy it, take it to the fullest as as in a, I'm so lucky to get to do this. You know, this is a one-off. This is what I wanted to do, and I'm going to enjoy every bit of it. And you seem to me to enjoy 99% of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, there were definitely – I mean, there were definitely some rough times, and there were some, you know, some times that weren't as enjoyable, and there were some times when it's kind of like, man, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, really. but those, those were few and far between. Um, the majority of the time, it was just, it was a fun, fun adventure. Sure, it looked to be a great adventure. I will tell you, so many times I was really envious. Uh, I wish my body would hold up to do that. You know, you I mean, this? I don't, you know, no, no. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. I mean, you become famous for that. I, it's um, uh, I kept that, waiting for you to show up. If tr- trust me, <laughs> if my hips and knees would uh, allow it, I would have been there. No. I have, I have a hard time. So many days, I'll go for my walk, and I'd think to myself. I'd have to do this like five times over to make to to, to have an average day for Aaron. It's it's funny because like I'll look back at some of the videos and I'll do like a afternoon recap and it's I don't know four or five o'clock right. in the afternoon. I'm like, all right, afternoon recap. Got five miles. Yeah, yeah. If that was, <laughs> it, what I would get is it's five thirty and I got about four miles, four four or five miles to go. So let's get busy. It's not going to walk itself. You know, it's like. I, at that point in the day, after walking all day, I got to go five more miles. Yeah. Just beat me, you know. And these are not easy. Miles. <laughs> no. It's not like walking around on the side. I was thinking to myself, it would be getting well. It's about four thirty, five o'clock, and I'm thinking, well, he's through, and I got about five miles to go. And it's like I better get moving. And it's like, oh my god, he's been walking since like eight o'clock this morning. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but it was. It was fun. But, I mean, I, I, I guess in a lot of ways you did do it like a job, though. I mean, your job was to walk all day. Well, and that was really what I was about to say. It kind of was my job. Yeah. I mean, it was, that's, yeah, that's what I'm I mean, to do. I mean, you did a really good job of, of documenting what you did. Uh, uh, they're interesting. I watch them first thing every morning. I do Wordle. Straight to the videos. You know? <laughs> well, that's cool. I, and, I, and I had great supporters. Um, people would comment. And it, I'd tell you, it really, really did help. I mean, I would, I would read the comments when I could. I didn't know, if you, I didn't know if you, you got to read them very often or not. And, and sometimes um, I could read them, but I wouldn't necessarily have the service to be able to respond to them. Right. Or whatever. Like yeah. Like one bar sure. or whatever. But, um, but it, was, it was really helpful to be able to kind of. Uh, have that support well, know that people were pulling I would go to the gym and complete strangers would come up and say hey your son-in-law is that your son-in-law that's hiking the Appalachian Trail and say, say man I can't wait to watch those videos every day and I wouldn't even know these people you know that's pretty cool and I would go different places and that would be the first thing well there were a couple of times even on trail when uh, complete strangers actually recognized me yeah I mean, um, and just said that you know they had some of them were, th- were through hikers. Um, a couple of them were Sobos, or southbound hikers right. that were watching my videos before they started. Sure. A um, couple of them wanted pictures. That was yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, um, 
basically you're a trail celebrity for, for 2023. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <A> minor. <laughs> well, well, you know. Well, getting to hike with um, – getting to hike, I got to hike uh, a few days with, with Taylor um, yeah. in the Hampshire hike. Yeah. Um, and she is she is one of the people that kind of inspired sure she me. she is she is she she is famous. She's famous. She's got she, fifty thousand. She's Appalachian Trail famous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody knows Taylor. But yeah. um, it was really really cool to get to know her and get to hike with her a few days. Yeah. Um, and then to have her shout me out on yeah the, help her too. I, it yeah. jumped too. I mean, you you talk about the power of of Margaretton and 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 association. It, it your 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 audience just kind of exploded with her help it yeah it, it doubled from there. yeah it um, did so yeah and she, and then she's just a really cool hiker yeah really that's cool, cool too just a good person yeah I, I think you had a lot of those with you yeah oh no absolutely absolutely um i mean there were there were a couple that <laughs> weren't weren't as much fun but yeah but yeah. the majority of folks i hiked with were just really really good oh, that's cool that's cool stuff uh it was an adventure of a lifetime. So are we thinking Pacific Coast Trail? Are we thinking? Well, so, I mean, I, I'm not going to rule it out. Um, there was definitely a couple of my good friends that, that we we talked about it a lot while we were on the trail. All right. Um, so definitely not next year, um, but it's a possibility yeah. for the year after. I mean. But I, I think I probably have to make some money before yeah, yeah, I was saying, yeah that's the <laughs> bad thing about about anything like that you know i mean but i'll i'll be truthful with you i've known um uh in my lifetime people who work so they could be off for ski season i know people that's work so they could live at the coast to surf in my life i've known musicians who have worked just enough to be able to continue to play music. So I mean, right. that's, that is a doable thing. It's just the amount of the the degree of poverty you want to live in. Right. I mean, Old time hiker lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, yet, yeah, yeah. I mean, I uh, I'd say short term. Um, you know, the foothills trail. Sure. Yeah. Luckily, would, yeah. would be really nice. That's a good trail. I think it's about seventy six miles. Yeah, I think. Um, so that'd be a, a nice little one to, to, sure. to experience. Um, and then uh, the Pinhoti Trail um, in Alabama and Georgia um, could be on my radar. Do you realize there's a new one, too, where you can walk to Key West? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure that I want to do the, the Florida Trail. Yeah, so, well, I, I, I used to follow this guy, Redbeard, and he did it. And he was saying that that was uh, one of his least favorite trails that he ever did. I talked to a few people that said it was. Great. I mean, he said he said it was wet, but but wet in a different way. And he said there was t- things that were wet in there that you did not want to walk through. And and no elevation change. Yeah, no elevation. Yeah, that's, well, I've learned that from running marathons. Actually, a flat marathon in a lot of ways is hurts. Is, more. Yeah, it does. And then having the ups and downs, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Uh, well, this is a great recap, you know. I'm glad you're home, too. Oh, thank I'm, you. I missed you. I am happy for you, and uh, I can't wait to see what your next adventure is. Well, I appreciate you having me. This was awesome. Welcome home. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs>